my Wi-Fi too has kind of been all over the place these last couple of days. Of course, right when uh, I have to do an interview, so it's of course. perfect timing. <laughs> of course. This whole time is just everyone going. Yeah, pretty much. So I am super excited because I'm here with Julia Whalen, actress, author, and award-winning audiobook narrator of over 300 audiobooks, including the original, co-written by Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinette Cowell. Julia, how are you doing today? Uh, how is 2020 treating you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, no, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I think it's been treating me uh, pretty well. I can't, I can't complain, to be honest. How about you? That's good. Um, yeah, it's been a rough year, I would say, but uh, it's going okay. I mean, hopefully it's going to get better. So <laughs> We're here. We're here at least. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still so, talking about books, you know. Exactly, yeah. So um, has there been any, have you had to like change your setup with narrating audiobooks at all during the pandemic? Has it affected your workflow at all or is it kind of the same? You know, I was in a very fortunate position where I was already doing the majority of my work from home. In fact, that's my booth back there, that big panic room. Oh, really? Thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was I was already working from home. There were uh, many narrators, especially New York narrators, um, who were not able to, uh, they did not have that set up. And so they were scrambling to get everything together, um, which I do not envy having to do that <laughs> under so much pressure. Um, but, you know, so I was, I was pretty set up for it. I think at the beginning, in the first couple of months, publishing was a little bit touch and go. Like, I would oh, yeah. finish a book, and then they would say, never mind, we're pushing it till next year. You know, <laughs> we're not even releasing oh, until no. February or something. Um, but honestly, for the most part, it's been, it's been consistent. So knock on what, knock on booth, <laughs> knock whatever on I booth. can. It's been okay. It's been okay so far. Oh, that's good. Uh, your work with the original was fantastic. I really loved the, oh, the original. Oh, thank you. And I wanted to know how you approached narrating that book. Like, what went into um, the voice for that character? Sure. Um, so one thing that I just love about about that book um, was that, you know, I don't know if you can call it a novella when it's just audio only. Like, I don't know what we're yeah. calling that if it's an audio vela. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but one thing that I love about that is that the immediacy of the story when it's that um you just jump right in you jump in the same way the character jumps right in she wakes up and is like what is going on and uh that's i i love that about this medium so for me it was a question of really putting myself in the character's shoes as much as the listener's shoes of you know what is this world what am i supposed to do what's my mission um and really figuring out as well like i don't know how spoilery we want to get with this. I don't know if there are rules, but um, figuring out how to make kind of two distinct voices yeah. that are covered by the same person. For sure. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so how the same person has two different voices. Um, and that was that was challenging. Uh, but I had I had a couple of talks with uh, Max Epstein, who's the producer on this, and we kind of gamed it out. And we were like, here's what I think is going to work best. And I knew they were going to be doing some sound engineering and sound design. Um, I didn't know the extent of it at the time, but uh, that was kind of something I was taking into account as I was recording as well. I do have, uh, by the time this interview goes up, I should have a review up for it. And that review is mostly spoiler free. I do go a little bit into details about um, just kind of the basic idea of it, I guess. Um, but I, I was curious, how how long does it take you to prepare or how long does each recording session go? Uh, it depends on the book. Um, it usually, so I definitely, most narrators, or at least they should, if they're not, they should. Um, but uh, most narrators read the book ahead of time because you have to, I came up then as I was doing my prep, I came up with a list of questions like pronunciations, especially when it's fantasy or oh, yeah, sci-fi sure. or something where there's a lot of world building. Like I need to know how to pronounce <laughs> what yeah. you just especially in fantasy where it's like this character has 13 vowels and two yeah. apostrophes and the just name having a how, YouTube am I, channel, how am I, I pronouncing this just having a youtube channel i find that so difficult <laughs> right. sometimes trying to pronounce the names i have to get the audiobook then and there listen we to go. it so there we go well so i don't have that i have to do the audiobook yeah. <laughs> before uh i can't do that so 
Um, there's always a round of prep. Uh, there's a prep read that happens where I put together a list of questions for the author. Um, and then also figuring out character voices, any demands in that in that realm. Um, and then and then there's the recording. And the recording process is usually about two hours in the booth for every finished hour of audio. Okay. Um, typically. But yeah. like I said, different different books present different challenges. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Is it difficult just um, like trying to balance the tone and the accents, especially when you're coming back from narrating something the previous day and to go back into that same kind of tone and accent? Is that a really thing that you struggle with? Because I imagine that would be pretty difficult. So I've learned I've learned a few tricks. I mean, I keep uh, clips of different character voices when I'm doing a project. Um, so that I can return to it. And sometimes I just don't feel for that reason. I just don't feel like stopping. Like I'll go oh, much yeah. longer in a day if I'm like, I just, I really want to stay in the story right now. Yeah. I don't want to step away from it. Um, and then obviously that issue is compounded if you're dealing with a series, for instance, where every year I get a new book and I've in the meantime recorded 50 other books and I have I'm like, I don't, I don't remember. So I've got certain series that are running and I've got character files from all five books. Oh, wow. You know, that I just saved. So, yeah. So was there anything with the original with that you feel like was more memorable recording it? Well, I mean, I, I love, I love the character's journey. Um, and I, I really identified with her and who she is. Um, and I think that the thing that really stuck out to me in terms of just the world building was that I, that entire concept of theming. Yeah. Which I just thought was so cool. It was very interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think those are the things that stuck with me most. Well, going off of that, um, with the whole idea of theming. So in the original, uh, people can, they basically have the freedom to theme their world and what they see. Uh, ignoring some of the dystopian kind of creepy aspects of that, how would you theme your world? <laughs> yeah, that's not problematic at all. <laughs> um, well, you know, honestly, now it's like I want everything. Um, <laughs> I want, I want all of the, anything different would be nice. Um, I, I mean, look, here's the thing. Like my one vice is travel mm. and not being able to do that during this time. Um, is is really hard for me so i think if oh, you yeah. gave me a theme of like i'm in an italian hill town yeah and i can just walk into a bar and get a drink and then go for a walk and stop and get an espresso and then go for a walk and sit down to a bowl of pasta <laughs> and some wine like i can't think of anything else i want more right now <laughs> that sounds amazing um, something like, themed not around 2020 would be nice <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Anything that's not this would be great. Um, I mean, I even thought the other day I was even missing like being in a Las Vegas club. Oh, and it's yeah. like, I'm old. I don't belong. And there is nothing that is appealing about that to me under normal circumstances. But yeah. right now I'm like, sure. Yeah, let's do that. At least it's different than your house. So <laughs> <laughs> something, something different. Well, what about you? How would how would you theme? Uh, if I had to choose, I mean, Preferably, I'd like to just go overboard with like the fantasy aspects, if if that's allowable with the theming. I would like to theme mine around like one of Brandon Sanderson's worlds, I think, maybe from the Stormlight Archive. But if I had to go more Aww. realistic, I don't know. I, I kind of like like a 50s aesthetic or just so definitely traveling somewhere would be nice. I think I'd want to be switching it up like constantly and going to different countries and stuff like that, theming my world around that and different cultures and architectures. Yeah, any anywhere other than 2020, like we were talking about, I think, for sure. Anywhere <laughs> other than my house in 2020. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you published your own book, My Oxford Year. Do you feel like your experience with narration has helped you with your writing at all? Um, yes, I do. I think that it, it goes both ways, though. Um, I was uh, I was a creative writing major in college and came out of a writing program and have uh, been a writer for a number of years, both in screenwriting and prose. Um, but I think the thing that this job gave me uh, was reading books that I would not choose for myself, frankly, reading really widely across category, across genre, learning that good writing is good writing, uh, regardless of how it's categorized. And um, I just really, I think this job kind of throwing me into the deep end of all kinds of literature uh, 
taught me my way around books, the way books are built. And um, so it helped my writing immensely. Um, and then I think also the writing informs my narration because I'm very sensitive to what a writer is trying to accomplish. Um, I kind of read it as a roadmap. I understand why they do things they do. Um, oh, yeah. And I feel it's a little bit easier for me to maybe channel the intention of the author. Yeah, for sure. So are you writing anything right now? I am. I am about halfway through my uh, second book. Um, and it's, uh, I, I'd like, I mean, this has been a challenging time to do anything creative, but it is, it is happening. Well, that's exciting. I'm excited for you. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. I'm excited too. It's been a, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> So do you have any favorite books that you'd like to mention? I'm sure some people on my channel would like some some recommendations. Oh, man. I mean, look, I cannot, I will not p play the favorites game with books I've narrated <laughs> because it's like asking favorite child oh, question yeah. and we're just, yeah. I won't do that. Um, I was, you know, I, I have, I have so many kind of foundational texts, you know, those books that like define different moments in your life. Um, and I, I, I'm that coming out of, again, that kind of like creative writing tradition. Like, I think probably for me, the best book ever written was Middlemarch, um, which I'm not saying everyone should like run out and read an 800 page Victorian novel. Um, but I just, it's just so beautiful to me. Um, and yeah, uh, Oh man, I don't know why this question always trips me up. Do, do you trips, actually have an answer to this question? Because I feel like with what you difficult. do, it's got to be impossible, right? It is impossible. It's hard to narrow it down to just your favorites, especially like when I read so many books, it's really difficult. I mean, there's ones that I think mean a lot to me that um, like Lord of the Rings, I think was one of the like the foundational books for me and The Hobbit. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely difficult to choose and narrow it down to just a few of them for sure. I mean, I, that's what I was going back to. It was like when I was, the book that kind of made me a reader and also made me want to write was um, The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle okay. by Avi. Um, and I think that just set me off on like my historic, my love of historical fiction. Um, and and then I think uh, on the kind of fantasy side of things, um, in high school, my favorite book was The Mists of Avalon, which oh, I know okay. is like now, now that we know more about her personal life is problematic, but uh, it what it taught me was, I think it was the first time I had seen someone take a world like the Arthurian legends mm -hmm. and put their own spin on it. Yeah. And yeah, I guess sure. we would call it, kind of call it proto fan fiction, really. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, but for me, that was just like, that just blew doors off of worlds. I was like, oh my God, you can do that? Um, <laughs> And so I, I really, that, that book meant a lot to me for what it taught me about the creative possibilities that existed. Um, and I just like, I just like books. I'm just a <laughs> I can agree nerd. with that. At the end of the day, oh. I'm a big old book nerd. I can relate I to say, that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, I, uh, V.E. Schwab's new book, The Invisible Life of Addie oh, LaRue, right. okay. is, I just narrated it and it is, amazing oh wow i'll have to so, check that out because i read the darker shade of magic series by her and i've been meaning to try out some more books by her for sure so is that yeah, adult is fantasy or is that young adult it's a it's adult it's adult okay i believe so yeah because well i mean i don't know how i think these lines are blurring but yeah the characters kind of is, are, are adults so okay i guess it's adult yeah oh that's awesome well i'm excited uh, is that out right now or is it no, it comes out on the 6th. On the 6th, okay. Of, of October. I don't know when this is going to air, but it comes oh, okay. out on October 6th. Okay. Yeah. So are there any books or authors that you that you want to narrate? Or that are on your bucket list for narration? <sighs> Man, that is a really good question. Um, I used to have that. And then last year, I was actually able to record... Um, one of her books. The author is Jojo Moyes, and I just okay. love, I love her writing, but she's British, and I, you know, typically an American narrator would not narrate um, a British novel, but she went and wrote a novel set in 
the States and I was able to do it and it was so great. Yeah. So that was really exciting. Um, I mean, I, I, I would love to do the, some of the classics. I have this, I don't know that this is ever going to happen because it's taken so long to just get the rights um, from the Salinger estate in general. But if they ever are able to do an audio book of Franny and Zoe okay. by J.D. Salinger, I, I want first dibs. That is another, again, foundational text for me. Well, anyway, I want to say a big thank you, Julia, for coming on my channel, being my the first person I've ever interviewed. Thank you so much. <laughs> I am so honored. That is just, I'm honestly, I'm very, that's just great. I can say I knew you when, you know? Exactly. There you go. <laughs> I was extremely nervous. Well, thank you for I having you me. <laughs> no, you, you did a very good job. They were oh, very thoughtful you. questions. Keep going, man. I think, I think you got a future in this kid. Oh, thank you. And for those of you that are interested in the the original, I will leave a link to that in the description, and I'll also leave a link to the review that I just put up, and uh, you guys should definitely give it a read, because it's really good. Or a listen, not a read, a listen. It's audio only. It would be great, though, if the review were, like, really scathing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I've done this whole this interview with me. You're like, I'm going to leave a link to the review. Yeah, don't read it. And, uh, yeah, don't read it, but, you know. Yeah. Or don't no. listen to what I mean. <laughs> don't listen. But no, this was great. You really, this was great. And uh, thank you for having me. It was, it was fun to talk about. If you want to hear my full thoughts on the original, don't forget to check out my review. And I'll also leave a link to where you can purchase the original and give it a listen yourself. And if you want to help support the channel and have your name added to the magical scroll, then don't forget to check out my Patreon.